Well guys, I hate to be that guy, but today I am that guy. Let's see what I forgot. I forgot wires and I forgot fuel. That's two things you need to bring to the dyno, just FYI. And your own carburetor, unless Car uh, Carl's here and he's uh, nice enough to uh, provide a carburetor. But today we're gonna dyno this guy and see exactly what the horsepower difference is between hub or wheel horsepower to the crank. That's what we're doing today. It's the AB comparison today. This right. is the B. Yeah, yeah, that is the B. Yeah. We had the A, as in Tyler had the A on Joe Simpson's hub dyno. Which he made it today to talk to Jim, which is good. He's just around the corners. I believe we can beat that on here. I think so. Right? <laughs> That's if, uh, otherwise, this is going to be a dud if you can't beat that. Yeah, it definitely would be a dud. Uh, on, online, I predicted just 25% more power. Yeah, yeah, we'll but, find out though. But we have so many advantages uh, with this electric water pump. This thing's already, and, and the nice headers. Yeah, real nice headers. And I'm going to change, I, I thought three, eight, I mean four, 86 or something like that was my prediction. It was 25% more. And I'm changing it right now to 499. We're gonna miss the 500. I'm predicting 499. 499? Well, um, Dennis's dyno chart said 497 on his uh, dyno sim. We'll hit 497. Dyno, uh, cause, cause when Dennis does the heads and cam for me and he does his dyno sim, it's always right on. Yeah, it's amazing how well that works, yeah. yeah. The dyno works simply. I, I just think of three things, right? The engine dyno, you just got to load it down so it doesn't yeah. run away in RPM. Yep. Right, so it's not real much rocket science. And you have to measure something, so we're measuring the pull, the strain. And that strain is this water break right here. And this is a simple, if, if you guys are uh, iron workers or, or um, yeah, iron workers and uh, riggers, they're always running um, load cells, another name for this. So it, it, um, this is the torque measurement, this strain gauge here. Gotcha. So the whole time it's pulling, it's just measuring the torque by the strain gauge uh -huh. and then to allow it to go to RPMs, yeah, the, yeah. the water brake just lets go. The water brake per, oh, let's say, uh, 300 rpm per second gotcha. whatever jim sets it at so it just lets go lets it go up some more rpm more rpm just lets go let's go unloads it let's say so it starts with a heavy load and uh -huh. it lets go and the whole time it's measuring torque and then horsepower is not a calculation horsepower is real horsepower is rate of doing work gotcha. so it then calculates the rpm to the to the torque with the formula, yeah, whatever that yeah. is, and it gives you your horsepower. Very cool. It's not that difficult. So uh, I just wanted to show you that. This is the fun part, <laughs> the strain gauge. That's the business end right there. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're about to fire it up for the first time on the dyno. Let's see how close my timing is.
It is kind of odd seeing the motor that used to be in your truck on the dyno. Uh, you got a Holley... 750. Alright. 750 Holley. And not that you need it, but it's 110 cam 2 or something. Yeah. Alright. It just leaks, leaks, uh, leaks a little bit from here, so that's the drip. That, that carburetor is set up. I mean, it's running in the 12s. 12s all the entire time? So it, it didn't change too much. Whoa, it I've didn't change that much. Oh, there. yeah, so that's interesting. Good, good. We haven't even messed with timing yet, so I think we might. We, we should hit 500. Yeah. So we're going to check the timing one more time just to make sure because it's hard to see. We got the cam builder over there, and his so far he's been uh, yeah. right on the money with his uh, calculations. All right, that train sounded as as good as any. Five uh, one. Right where you said it was going to be. Proof doesn't like 36 degrees over 34. Oh no, it, it actually it gained one horsepower. I was looking at the torque. My bad. Yep. Check that average, average. Average at the bottom. 504 is yeah. what it made. So that definitely did. Okay, so we're gonna fatten it up a little bit because um, Carl noticed that it was a little lean on the wide band when I put more timing in it. So before we say that it's um, the timing didn't help. We're gonna fatten it up just a little bit more. I need some screws real quick. And then we're gonna see if it makes more power. I don't know, will it? We're about to find out. This is the perfect place to test like this. So did it like it? That is the question. No. That the average looks like 412. Yep. And 417 so, was previous. Yep. So it did not like it. 
Okay, so the LT1 is back. I got three down on sheets. We'll compare them real quick. And before I go any further, I want some of you guys to understand that, you know, just remember that whether you, uh, you say one dyno is, is making too much more horsepower on the engine dyno uh, versus the hub dyno, uh, let's just point out this one thing real quick. Um, remember, uh, when this was in the S10, it had shorty headers that were definitely too small for it. It had a mechanical water pump and it had an alternator. At the dyno, it had bad boy race headers on it, no alternator and an electric water pump. So it had a lot of things helping it out on the engine dyno burst the chassis dyno. So let's go compare those three sheets that we got from the engine dyno. All right, so we're back here. This is the 400, of course, and it has way better headers uh, since the shorties that were on the LT1. And also it has a electric water pump. So I'm, I'm pretty certain that if the LT1 was in this configuration right here on Joe's dyno, it most likely would have made more horsepower. But anyways, we, we can only compare or what we have with the tools that are available to us. So what I have right here is uh, three dyno sheets. This one was one where I fattened it up and I wanted to just go over this because a lot of people say that, you know, uh, these plugs right here, when I show them to them, are too lean, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Either you're not pulling them out right away or you don't know how to read plugs because here's the fuel ring on that. See right here, you can see the fuel ring right there. And I only fattened it up just a little bit. And let's see, right here, you can see the motor didn't even peg 500 horsepower with the exact same timing. The only thing I changed was the fueling. And you can see it right here uh, up top. It's 11, 8, 12, 11, 12, 6, uh, 12, 5, 12, 7. You know, and it's, it's fatter right there too. So let's go to where it pegged 504 horsepower, which is right here. But if we compare the air fuel, you can see it's not much leaner, but just a little bit leaner. And it gained um, nine horsepower over this fatter mixture. So, you know, obviously uh, this is where the motor wants to be with a white porcelain at the top. And you can see there's absolutely no detonation going on in this guy. So, uh, I want some of you guys to look more into plug reading. When you're supposed to pull them out, if you're leaving them in there too long uh, and it's looking like way richer than this, like if I left this in there for a while, drove around, it would look like, you know, like those plugs you see in whatever your children's manuals are that tells you what to do. But they're pulling out plugs that have like 60,000 miles on them. That's not how you read plugs. Anyway, so let's get to this right here. Uh, this is where um, I still, I'm believing that it's still liked 34, well, that's gone. We don't need it anyways. Uh, 34 degrees timing, and here's why. On this dyno right here, it will read average horsepower. If you see right here, 417.4 on the torque, 417.2 on the horsepower. Now, it did peak higher here, right? Because look, here, let's look at this real quick, see? It made 501 at 6,600. And of course, you know, my carburetor does get a little fatter as it gets closer to the top. But I know I didn't mind that because especially when I'm running nitrous, I would rather it go a little fat than lean to make a little more extra power up here. But anyways, let's get to this. You can see, you might think this is where you want it to be because man, it made 504, it made 500 right here. You know, it made 500 at, you know, 6,700. This is where I'm gonna put my timing. But if you look at the average horsepower, it's 416.8, 416.6. Now, granted, if you were to put, you know, this tune up and go down the track, that tune up going down the track, it probably wouldn't make any difference in your quarter mile of time. It's just too little bit of horsepower. We're splitting hairs here. And Jim, uh, the dyno operator said, you can probably lean this motor out a little more and make more power. But again, like uh, I wanted this to be safe you know, when I'm driving around the street, and really when I'm driving around the street, I put 93 pump gas in this, not cam two, and I ran 32 degrees of timing. And that's the same timing of pump gas I ran when I ran a 10.8 at 122, was at 32 degrees timing and 93 octane. So it was, you know, a little bit more on, probably down on horsepower, but it doesn't really matter. I think that that little tiny bit of horsepower, at that point, you're splitting hair. So it's a little better to be safe than try to make peak horsepower because you're kind of having that reward versus risk factor. I'm going in there. 
And for like two, what is it, like, you know, you know, three horsepower different, uh, you know, not a big deal. And your average peak is actually down right there. So anyways, guys, I hope this uh, video was entertaining and you learned something because I learned something today. It's always fun to get on the engine dyno and try different things. So with that said, don't forget to subscribe, keep on wrenching, and peace. Peace. <laughs>